And welcome to the Q&A for the Virginia Fish and Hang event. So the event's going to take place on May 19th through May 21st. And we have um, tonight, we're going to just go through, we try to put together a presentation where we could answer all of the questions that might happen because there's a lot of moving parts with all of these different fish and hang events. And it's nice to have a space that we can give you all the information as well as um, you can reach out to air, talk to all of the co-hosts of the event and ask any questions that you might have. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yay. Nice to meet and see all of you. I recognize most of your faces. I live in Arlington, Virginia, and I'm excited to host you all. And um, I've been with United Women on the Fly three years this fall, and I'm so excited to be co-hosting my very first fly fishing event with United Women on the Fly and Fly Fish Instruct. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm Erin. I live in Sterling. I've been in Virgin Northern Virginia, um, near Dulles Airport. And um, I fish the Rose River pretty regularly during COVID. So it's a favorite of mine. It's a secret spot, so you can't tell anybody. <laughs> um, and yeah, I've been working with United and Heather um, for, I guess, a little bit less than Angelica. So almost three years, maybe. Yeah, I'm excited. Really excited to meet everybody and fish together. And I'm Heather. I go by the pronouns she, her, hers, live on the native lands in Spokane, Washington. And I'm founder of United Women on the Fly, as well as founder of Fly Fish Instruct. And kind of the uh, creation of these different fish and hang events back in the day, pre-COVID, as I'm sure many of us talk about. Um, so the fish and hang events, we I used to do a bunch over on the Missouri River, and that is in Montana. And basically, it's the same sort of format. And I thought, well, rather than keep going to the same place over and over, it would be fun to do one um, in different locations all over the country. And so that's kind of how these fish and hangs kind of came about. So it's been almost 10 years. I've been running and hosting all of these fish and hangs for about 10 years. So um, I'm really excited to see you all as well. And hopefully we can answer all of your questions. And Kiki, <laughs> what is that picture? Oh I, I don't know. I found it on Facebook or somewhere and I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh God. That's so funny. That was right after I caught a, a really nice fish. That was actually in West Virginia. Oh, um, awesome. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway. So, um, I'm a local as well. I live in Falls Church, Virginia, and I, I actually guide in Virginia, Maryland, and just got my Pennsylvania guiding license. And I've been guiding since 2002, I do believe, um, and have been fishing since I was five years old, so a long time. But, um, you know, and I've lived in, in uh, near the, you know, the D.C. metropolitan area since 1981. So I have, I have fished a lot of the water around here in all of those three states. And, you know, as I said, I guide as well. So, you know, I've met, God, Heather, I just met you years ago you know, briefly at, at, I think it was the Edison fly fishing show. And also, um, uh, and Angelica, it was just, gosh, what was it last year at Bo show, Bo Beasley show. So, you know, it's so nice to be able to come together now, um, and, 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 you know, participate in this. So I'm, I'm very, very excited about it to share my local knowledge as well as all of you too. So, I mean, Aaron, you said you you fished the rose a lot. Um, you fish on Doug's property or Rose River oh, up in the park at the park. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I have, I have uh, fished that many times um, in my career as well. I so. always look for you. No, oh, really my car, my fish mobile, probably. <laughs> I've never seen another lady up there. Only men. Isn't that something? Well, you know, the problem is we need to fish together. So we need, and, and Angelica, same thing. We need to get together and, and fish you know, and fish together a little bit more often, I do believe. So I'm up for it. Yep. Well, yep. so are all of our new friends. Yeah. Yes. The area is not going to know what to do with us. <laughs> no. Oh God. When, no. It's no. going to be incredible. And, and, uh, and the reason really why we chose, chose this area is because you were very mindful as far as conservation goes and making sure that we're choosing an area that, um, has enough um, areas that we can disperse out. And this location definitely has that. So it'll be fun for us all to get together, but also um, go out during the day and fish. So awesome. Welcome Kiki. We have an yep. awesome, awesome uh, co-host group. So I'm really excited to be working with you all. 
Um, we also, other couple other people that we're, we're working with is Trout Routes and uh, Fly Fish Instruct. So we all come to get, came together, United Well on the Fly, Trout Routes and Fly Fish Instruct and created a scholarship actually for this uh, weekend. And Trout Routes on Friday night, we're going to do just an apps and, and bevies evening. And I'll do a, um, a presentation and Angelica will help me on this because she knows a lot about the pro this app as well. But we're going to share kind of what Trout Routes is. Um, it's basically an app to find uh, water to go and fish. And it's really helpful knowing private and public land. And so yeah. Um, can be really helpful for us, uh, especially in this specific area. And Fly Fish Instruct is has partnered with United Well on the Fly for all of the education. And so Fly Fish Instruct is providing all of the education for the workshop, as well as um, providing a half day on the water with our scholarship winner. And we were able to, uh, we uh, randomly or anonymously selected a, one of our scholarship winners, and this is Patricia. So Patricia Rivasista, she's <laughs> going to be joining us, really excited to, to have her join. And really what, what, why we chose Patricia and um, why we chose her no, uh, applicant number nine is what it was. <laughs> why we chose applicant number nine was because she's always a giver. And it was, there was one sentence that really stuck out to all of the uh, scholarship selection process was that this is the first time that she's ever applied for a scholarship because she's always that person that's giving the scholarships. <laughs> and that was really special to us and just how much she's given back. So we're really excited. She's from Virginia. She already fishes, but she's beyond excited to, um, to learn to fly fish and, and learn a new community and just kind of help immerse herself into it. So if you see her, just say hello and tell her what you love most about fly fishing. Um, she has a, a great resume where I'm, I'm really excited to, to meet her personally. Um, so the Fish and Hang. So again, I already mentioned that it was founded about 10 years ago in the Missouri on the Missouri River. And really this format's pretty simple. So the format is where people come in. Um, we're trying to keep budgets in mind. So trying to be budget friendly where you can camp, you can drive in each day, you can, you know, get a nice hotel, you can get a, a yurt. So basically you choose your own lodging. Everybody goes out throughout the day. Um, we're going to give you suggestions for guides, you know, and places to fish. And that's what this is going to be for some DIY fishing. And then we're going to have some evening activities and I'll talk more about the itinerary. So again, keeping it budget friendly and wanting to just continue to build that community. And truly, as our dear friend, Rachel Finn would say, it's all about the hang. <laughs> and that's so true. You know, it's just, it's so incredible for us as, as women and just as a fly fishing community to get together. And I know me personally, I'm needing the community and the personal touch because of the last three years, we really haven't had much of this. So it's going to be really a lot of fun. Um, as far as areas go, I know most of you, there are some that are not even familiar with the event. So I'm just going to quickly go over kind of the location. So we are going to be, our main location is going to be in Syria, Virginia. So pretty good central location to a lot of places <laughs> here are uh, going to be on the Monacan and ancestral territories. I always like to, whenever I'm visiting anywhere, really like to dive into the history and see who the original people were of the land. So you can actually go in and do some research. Another thing too, the part of why we chose Syria was Shenandoah National Park. So there's a lot of public water accessible within the area. So again, that was one of our main concerns is, you know, if we're going to be bringing a large group or bringing, you know, more than 10, 15, 20 women or people that we want to make sure that the resource can handle that. And this specific resource can handle that. So again, just always being conservation minded. Um, as far as travel goes, so pretty close. You're close to Washington, D.C., close to Charlottesville, uh, Richmond, Baltimore. So it's really, like I said, a pretty good central area. And area resources, and we're going to, Kiki's going to get more into some of these areas that we're listing for you, but there's a lot of DIY fishing in the area. Um, so if you could even just research or Google, you know, uh, public water fly fishing Shenandoah, and there's, you're going to find a ton and we're going to provide a bunch of resources as well.
a ton of different resources that were put together. And again, I will make sure that I will, I'll save this as a PDF and I will email it to everybody. So you have access where you can, all of these are clickable. So you can go in if you want and do a little research on just the local fishing and the resources, the area. VA fishing regulations too. We're going to definitely, it's um, something for you. You're responsible for knowing the fishing regulations. So, um, and really it's to protect the fisheries. So just know them. And we just ask that you please obey all of the, the VA regulations. Facebook group. So I'm sure you all have already uh, been into the Facebook group. If you're not, please ask to join. And this is where, um, where you can meet other people. So a lot of women are coming in solo. And so this is a great place to say, Hey, I'm coming in on Friday. Does anybody want to go fish? Or I'm coming in on Saturday. Does anybody want to go fish? So utilize that we as administrators are only letting people in to the group or into this Facebook group that are going to be a part of this. So there won't be, um, it's should it's safe, you know, so there aren't going to be anybody just lurking around looking where people are going to be fishing. Also, we will be utilizing this. So as I'm traveling and driving in, I'll be posting most things. Like if there's any updates or anything, I'll be posting them in the Facebook group for its real time, just because emails can get so clunky that having that um, information in the group is going to be the best, uh, the best way to share that information. Also, if you haven't already, we have an email sign up directly for this weekend. So you can sign up for the weekend. It's actually on our Eventbrite tickets. And so here, if you go into it, you can just click on, you know, sign up for the emails and you'll get a bunch of emails. So it's just another way. Again, we're just trying to provide all of the information um, to, to you all. Offering some, if you want to buy a hat and or if you want to buy I Fish I Belong t-shirt. So we're doing event pricing and all all of that can also be found in our event, right? So you just purchase it. Um, United on the Fly is uh, going to be taking, we'll pay for all of the ex additional service fees for that. So just a fun thing to have. And basically you'll get an email once you've purchased it, where you'll be given a code where you'll go in on the website, you'll select which hat you want, you'll use that code. And then I will be bringing them down and delivering them to you. You can tell like all four of us are obviously diff different shapes and sizes. And so there'll be six different options with colors for the I fish I belong t-shirts and uh, I will be providing, you'll be able to select which color, which size we have a woman's, a woman's size. We also have unisex sizes and all the sizes, I believe go up to six XL and also extra small. So trying to be very inclusive to all sizes, as well as um, all genders based on what, whatever your body type is. And I'm wearing one right now and I love them. They're very comfortable and they look good on all body types. So all right, uh, we're almost getting to the goods and the meat of everything. So why did we select May for the event? Um, one of the, and uh, Aaron and, and Angelica and Kiki, I'd love for you to help kind of chime in on this as well. But for me, you know, I think May, especially where you all live in the, in the East Coast or in Virginia, in this area, the fishing, it can be really good. And it starts to warm up, you know, we start to have some more hatches. And this is kind of the ideal, one of the ideal times to, to fish the area. And so truly, that was one of the main factors of why we chose May. Is there anything else like for, I know the, I know the cherry blossoms are blooming right now. They'll be done by the end, but um, you know, anything else to add to May, like why it's um, special, Aaron, Angelica, or Kiki? Well, as a guy, um, I always am excited when May rolls around because May on the East coast is typically our sulfur season and sulfurs. I don't know if y'all are familiar with it's an aquatic insect it's a mayfly and it's a beautiful yellow pale yellow to bright yellow uh mayfly and it's absolutely beautiful and you know when they start hatching out and they're actually in this area um there are three sizes that we actually fish real quick there's a size 18 which we call a dorothea then there's a size um, 16 which we call an invaria and then there's a, a larger one we call a rotund so you have three different sizes of the actual mayfly and the fish just love them and they're they're just absolutely beautiful so um that's that's why i personally like the month of may you know earlier march and april you know we do have 
what I call the April grays are the large, darker Quill Gordons, Hendrickson's and March and March Browns as well. But when you get into the get into the sulfurs, it's quite it's quite a spectacle if you're actually in a hatch, if you actually see a hatch come off. It's really cool. Yeah. I've never experienced a sulfur hatch. I've never yeah. even seen one. So hopefully I have enough yeah. days that I'm there. So yep. yep. Fingers yeah. crossed. Awesome. Aaron or Angel. I'd add that um it's a uh typically on a Virginia May, we won't be having any snakes yet. Um, I'm an anti-snake person and, um, <laughs> this area when it warms up is very snaky. So, um, if it's too warm, you will not find me there. I'll be looking for small mouth on the river somewhere in a boat. <laughs> um, so, but it is, it's absolutely beautiful. And as, um, some of these sections, there's hiking and stuff. There's a lot of other uses happening. So there's always people around, even though when you drop in on some of the the streams, um, you can be pretty isolated, but it is incredibly mm. stunning. Um, there might be bears. Um, there's, it's great there. It's just a beautiful area. So, um, I love, <laughs> it's a great time to be out where you're not freezing your butt off and your fingers aren't frozen and you're not sweating to death yet. So that's my favorite part of this time of year. <laughs> I'll second Aaron on that as a menopausal older woman, <laughs> Like it is so much cooler in May to be fishing here in the DMV area anywhere within four hours. So I'm excited to see you all. I'm, I'm looking at everybody and I'm like wishing we could go out this weekend. <laughs> totally. It's supposed to rain, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. 46 days. We're getting so close. It'll happen. It will be here before you know it. Awesome. It's going to be a really fun itinerary and this itinerary, you can take it or leave it. Like some will go for a few, some will come for everything. You know, this is the beautiful thing of this whole, um, just, uh, just this kind of, um, template or way. So Friday night arrive and DIY fish. So I know many of you draw are working throughout the day, so you can arrive whenever peace. Some people are going to be camping. Some people are staying in other lodges. Some are staying at the yurts. So it's all, everyone's just kind of all over the place. Uh, from 6 to 8 p.m., we're going to have evening fish tales at Rose River Farms, the yurts. And we're going to, again, talk about the Trout Routes app education. So we just ask that if you want um, to bring an appetizer and a beverage of your own choice and just come and, and hang out. So I um, am not sure what specific yurt we're going to have this at. We'll decide I'll probably, I'll post it on probably Thursday. Once I get there on Thursday and I take a peek at the, the actual location, we'll decide where we want it to be exactly, but do know that it'll be at Rose river farms. And I'm sure it's not going to be too hard to, to miss a bunch of women <laughs> together. So yeah, you, no. <laughs> you won't, you won't, you won't miss out on us. I promise. So Saturday DIY fishing and exploring. So this is when you're out on your own again, utilize the Facebook group. And if you're coming solo, just say, Hey, you know, does anybody want to go out and fish? Um, we do have an independent angler workshop from 10 AM to 2 PM. It is currently sold out, but we do have a wait list for that. So if you want to be added to the wait list, you can um, do that. And then at 7 PM, uh, we are going to do dinner at Graves mountain. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. And then on Sunday, it's just DIY fishing and depart. So again, utilize uh, the Facebook group um, to make, if you're coming solo. And I, what I would really love to see is if, um, if you don't know somebody, maybe just say hello or at the app, you know, at dinner and or at the eat Friday night evening, be sure to just really just introduce yourself and say hello to some new people. I think you're going to be really surprised at how these new friends you're going to meet in the area. And if you're brave enough, go out and fish with them too. So it's uh, the, my bestest friends have been because of putting myself out there on social media, honestly. Check in if if you have reserved a yurt. And again, you will get a separate email about all of the yurts. But um, if you booked a bed in the yurt, so check-in is 2 p.m. So you can check in at 2 p.m. I will be sending you an email with your roommate as well as um, which yurt you're going to be in. And then um, we also, because the yurts did sell out, Aaron was... Aaron actually was able to get a block of rooms at Graves Mountain. So there is an option for that too. And so check-in at Graves Mountain is going to be at 4 p.m. Meals. Meals, you're on your own. Um, 
So I, those that are staying at the yurts, we're probably going to do something where we're doing a communal meal, but uh, again, on Friday night, uh, bring an appetizer and then a beverage of choice, your own beverages just for you. Saturday, we're going to do dinner. And then I would say most people on a lot of these, a lot of people will fish for the morning, go out to lunch or have lunch somewhere on the river and then go back and out, go back and out, go back out and fish. So, um, and then Sunday you're on your own for meals. Um, Saturday dinner, as I mentioned, uh, we're doing it with egg mount. Oh gosh, I spelled, I did that wrong. It's Graves Mountain. For some reason, I wanted to put Mountain Graves, Graves uh-huh. Mountain. And so that's going to be on Saturday night. It's going to be at 7 p.m. So the cost for that, it's going to be $32 a person plus gratuity plus tax. So it comes out to be about $41. And again, that does include your gratuity. It's going to be Buffalo. Oh my God. Buffalo style. Wow. <laughs> I, just drove, I just drove seven uh, hours Buffalo. in the snow. So my brain is like gone right now. Um, it's going to be buffet style and they can accommodate dietary restrictions. And Aaron, anything you want to add that you found out um, or anything to add to that? They said just a week out is so if you have any kind of um, food allergies or um, dietary restrictions, just to let them know a week in advance um, so that they can make sure that they accommodate you. But they are um, very accommodating and um, Graves Mountain for if you don't know, if you're not from the area, it's not something fan- super fancy, um, but it is definitely very well loved. They have huge festivals there. Um, there's a huge apple festival. It, it's a great place that's got a range of options from camping to hotel rooms to cabins and different things. So um yeah, they've been really, really great to work with. So cool. And there's gonna be uh uh is it casting for recovery? Isn't there another yeah so there's another group of women that are also going to be there the same weekend. So we're literally going to be taking over Syria, Virginia. It's gonna be awesome. Um Registration is required. We can have a max of 30 people and the final head count is due by 512. So there is a on our event, right? Again, you can just go in and I know some of you have already reserved yourself for dinner. So thank you. And we're asking for payment ahead because if we do reserve and say there's 30, we will get charged for 30. So we're just asking for that. So that way I'm not personally paying out of my pocket. Um, And again, we're not making any money off of this. It just, all of it goes directly back to uh, Graves Mountain. So Jean, so we did have yurts. Those are, um, have already been booked, but again, Aaron was able to get 12 rooms, like a block of 12 rooms at Graves Mountain. So $120 um, guests are responsible for calling and making their own reservations. So the phone number is here. And again, all we can send this out. We'll put this on into the Facebook group as well. Um, the cutoff date is April 19th. So if you're, you know, kind of thinking about it, once April 19th happens, those blocker rooms will then become available to anybody. So there might be rooms, but um, there might not be. And then, you know, there's different taxes and stuff. You just want to call and get your room reserved and check-in is at four o'clock. Lots of camping in the area. I tried to to do some different times, you know, as well from Syria. So really Graves Mountain does have camping available and then Cedar Mountain too. Those are probably, and excuse me, Madison Vines RV Resort and Cottages. So those are probably the three most, the closest to kind of everything that's happening. I mean, as I mentioned, we're just going to hang. So I'll send all of the details as uh, where we're going to be on the yurt for our uh, just appetizers and um, appies and bevies. Probably fire. I mean, they always provide wood. So yeah, we'll have a fire. Yeah. So bring a chair, bring, bring, Just hang. We're, it's just going to be a fun game. Yeah. We'll probably, I mean, I actually do this speed, not, you know, how there's like speed dating. I do speed fishing where, and it, this has worked really well for Spokane on the fly, where we do every two minutes where you go and you meet somebody and you talk to them for two minutes. And then I'm like, okay, everybody switch. And it's kind of a really fun way to get to know people. So we'll probably do something like that just to kind of, um, you know, get to know each other. Speed networking. Speed Mm -hmm. networking. There we go. Um, So different educational opportunities. So uh, like I mentioned, we're mentioned, we're offering that independent angler workshop. It's sold out. There is a, there is the um, wait list, but there are all, there will also be other educational opportunities. One of them is tonight because we're going to show you different 
setups, leader setups. We're going to talk about some of the hatches. We're going to, you know, kind of give you the equipment. So we're providing some of that education for you, but also, you know, throughout the evenings, or if you're there, talk to any one of the co-hosts and ask us and, and it will try to provide as much information or education as we can. And if we don't know, we'll, we'll ask. So please don't be shy to ask questions. Again, the workshop wait list is there. It's, everything's on the Eventbrite uh, link. And also those of you that are um, coming to the to any fish and hang, whether whichever one you're coming to um, does get a free live um, summer trout fishing techniques that I'll be teaching on Monday the 1st. So it'll be via Zoom. It will also be recorded. So you'll have that. So again, you'll you'll be once you sign up for the email, you'll receive a coupon code. You just register with the coupon code. It's free. So again, just another way that we can give back to you. Um, so to make you more confident and competent on the water. And so you'll feel like you're ready to go for this DIY fishing weekend. DIY fishing again. So the weekend is DIY. It's not guided by your hosts. Review the information on local waters, connect with other women in the Facebook group to make your fishing plans. When I was doing a bunch of research on the area, I found some really great uh, DIY fishing blogs. So uh, I provided those. These are also listed. If you go onto the website, um, the uwotf.com fish and hang Virginia. So there is a, um, an actual handout. It's a PDF. You click on it. It's called the weekend uh, details and checklist. So it has all of these listed as well, but there's some, um, some great blogs out there. So we try to provide you a couple of links. And then Aaron, if you want to um, just roll through some of this. Sure. Yeah. Um, so in terms of getting your fishing license, obviously you want to check the site above the DWR site for um, Virginia regulations in, in general, if you're not, you know, in-state versus resident or non-resident. Um, but because we will be fishing in the park and then potentially there's some national forest nearby that if you're fishing in there, you want to make sure that you get your national forest permit. Um, and Kiki, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't, they're very minimal cost wise. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they could be $5, $10. But as I said, normally, you know, I would advocate to get the license, the trout stamp, and you'll talk about this and the, the other stamp, because you just never know. Sometimes it, get very, it can get very confusing on yeah. what is what. So, Yeah. And I, I also operate Not the true. same way. It's like get everything and that way you're mm -hmm. covered um, yeah. because it's really easy to find yourself in a section of water that you yeah. didn't realize was stocked right. or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I see your note, Vanessa, we do not need a national park pass. Um, if you go up into the park, it's a gravel parking lot we can park in up there. Um, there's lots of streamside parking throughout all, all of the local stuff. But um, the National Park Permit just, um, it requires, I'm reading some notes of, that I made about fishing in national forests. Um, uh, it's necessary most places except for on the Shenandoah River and in a, other couple places. Um, but you should have one, anybody that's between 16 and 65. So you should have one if you fall in that range. Um, and then there's special trout areas. Um, Shenandoah National Park only has a single point hook artificial lures. So no bait, no treble hooks, that kind of stuff. Um, so it is kind of nice for fly fisher. I, you know, like I said, I fish there a lot in the winter and there's no problems. There's no, not rent any conventional fishing there. Um, and then with the trout stamp, I called for clarification. So I made sure I gave you guys the right information, but any place that's stocked by the state, um, requires you to have a trout stamp. And so then the lower section of the rows does have a stocked section. So, um, better safe than sorry, just to get it, because, um, there are a lot of these waters that have small sections that are, and you, it's not worth the fees of getting fined by, um, mm. A, an agent out if you're in the field and the hassle and the stress and everything else that goes along with it. So, um, yeah, you would want to get your, the license, the trout stamp and the national forest stamp. So those are the three that I would recommend. Yeah. Now the, the one thing about going up into Shenan Shenandoah national park, if you go in at one of the entrances, you know, at the top, you do have to pay an entry fee. If you go in at the bottom, there's, you just drive in and park. So just keep that in mind. There are, there are entrances 
that you have to pay a, like, I think it's 25 to $30, I think. Yeah. To, yeah. To drive so, in at the top. Yeah. So for Vanessa, for your question, if you wanted to come in from the top section, then a national park pass would be beneficial, but not necessary. Yeah. Yes. Um, but the section that I'm talking about that we would access from yes. Rose River Farm, you just continue on past it. Yep. There's a dirt right. and you just hike in and hike up and yeah, tons of trails bottom. to mm-hmm. hike on back up in there. And one other thing I didn't include in my notes is that there are sometimes people on horses on trails. So something to keep in mind for uh, road apples on the trail and also coming face to face with a horse on a trail is always a little bit unnerving if you're not expecting it. So <laughs> something to think about. Mm-hmm. And so, those that are coming to uh, what Yellowstone for what a fish and hang, I mean, you might as well just get your national parks uh, yeah. annual pass because you'll be, you're going to need it for Yellowstone. So no, well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and if you're over sixty five, you know, I've got a lifetime pass anyway, so we don't have to pay anymore. So even yeah. North Carolina, the Blue Ridge Parkway is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So and to you know the money for the National Forest stamp as well as the trout stamp is going to go back to yeah. the to the area and the fishery and for conservation. So. Yeah. You know, yeah. if we, if you buy a trout stamp and you don't need it, that's okay. The money's going for a good cause. So yeah. um, just something to, to think about. So. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And all the links for the licenses and everything you can see here, we provided the link to the regulations in the front. So if you have questions about any of the regulations, th- some of the trails in and out of the park are pretty rocky, steep. Um, they're just uneven. Like I said, also horses. Um, and there's been, you know, we've had a lot of wind, so there'll probably be trees or li- big limbs down. Um, I myself rolled my ankle on the Rose River two years ago, and it's still kind of wonky. Those things happen. I'm, I mean, and I'm literally filthy when I come out climbing, sliding up and down the hillside, sliding my butt over big rocks. Um, and I fish this sections of the river without ever wearing waders too. So I try to stay out of the water as much as possible because it's so skinny in on the Mm -hmm. upper rows in the park. So things to think about, we're on the Eastern side of the Shenandoah mountains. So you can expect the afternoons to get dark kind of quickly um, just because we're on that shaded side, but, um, and that'll also make the temperature cooler. So dress appropriately for that. Um, Mm -hmm. The sun can sometimes spook the fish, but as the, um, the water's warming up the stream beds, you'll start seeing them moving around. I've seen some really spooky holes where the fish dart as soon as they hear you a mile away. And then I've also seen brook trout launching themselves out of the water, like dolphins and they, nothing scared them. So it's kind of weird depending on where you go. Um, one of my favorite areas down the street from where we're going to be is a, um, a fire road that you need. I've seen minivans on this road. I would never recommend it because it's rocky. It can get eroded very easily. Um, you want a little bit of ground clearance and a, a vehicle that it's, it's pretty bumpy. So it'll give you a little bit of a, a toss while you're on your way up, but incredible fishing up there. Something, so something to think about, but most importantly, I think to be aware of is, is we are going to be in a very natural area. So there are venomous snakes in our area. There are copperheads and rattlesnakes. You want to make sure that you're wearing closed toed shoes, um, probably something with a little bit up to your ankle to protect you in case you end up getting um, in a snaky area. Um, there will also probably be bears in and around in the spring. So really make sure you're looking out for the mamas um, or making noise, clapping, singing, whatever you need to do. And then um, because it's been such a extremely mild winter here, mm-hmm. um, the ticks might be pretty bad. So mm-hmm. something I do particularly is to um, treat pre-treat my clothes with permethrin. And so I'll spray, put everything out in the yard. I spray it down, let it dry. You don't ever spray it on clothes you're wearing or on your skin. Um, it's a great trick to help reduce exposure to ticks and tick-borne illness, um, it is pretty prevalent in our area. So just something, we don't want anybody to get sick or, or hurt. Um, and then if you can maybe carry the tick remover, um, I'll probably have some with me because I grew up in the woods. <laughs> so, but make sure when you do get out of the woods, do a, a check through your hair That's on your it. pants, that kind of stuff is always really mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, and, and just to add that most of the time, either I always wear waders just for those three things, ticks, snakes, and poison ivy. So, but, you know, now that, that we can also buy just pants without, you know, without the top part of it, that that's pretty 
you know, pretty comfortable move around in. I don't do any, any more of the wet wading stuff anymore because of, cause I've already had Lyme disease. So, you know, and I've seen plenty of snakes, you know, so, and I always carry Benadryl with me just in case, but you know, a first aid kit and whatever is a good idea too, but yeah. 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 You just have to, you have to just watch where your hands and where your feet are going at all times. I always take, you know, something and throw it up above me in the rocks just to kind of scare whatever's up above me. And Oh, on that note, there's also a plant that I've touched down there that I didn't realize what I touched. And then later my hand got got real itchy. Itchy. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it, but it's like a metal thing. Yeah. You have to be. Yeah. It wasn't poison ivy. So, cause yeah. I don't really get, I should knock on wood. I don't really get poison ivy, but there is a plant. Yeah. And I've also seen some pretty big spiders in rock holes. Yeah. And I, while yeah. I had, I was just telling somebody this weekend, I had my hand in a hole and I was shimmying around a rock and I was like, Oh no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> So just things, to, I mean, you're in the woods. It's yeah, you know, you're in the what woods, you do. You so um, just things to be mindful of. If you don't have venomous snakes or bears in your area, um, they are, they do live here. This is why I want to go back to New Zealand. There's nothing that I'll, there's nothing that can kill you there. It's like Iceland, Iceland. There's nothing in Iceland that can kill you either. Oh my gosh. Um, Just the water. Yeah, (laughs) that's true. Yeah. Uh, You know, so this is, all of these are great kind of just re re, to reiterate is just utilize the Facebook group and make, make a fishing buddy, right? It's always better to go in a a group of two, three, four, you know, so that way you all can drive together. And um, if something were to happen, you're, you're together. So just safety in numbers. So, and um, final point on that too, Heather is um, just so you guys know, you all know um, that this area is, I have AT&T as my cell phone carrier. It is absolutely Mm -hmm. horrible cell phone service. So to the extent that you can um, do some online maps or um, offline maps that you can download or other reference points, because um, I know when I went to North Carolina fish and hang last year, I, there was also not cell phone service where I was staying or near the fly shop and I couldn't get service. I couldn't figure out where anybody was. So it was a little bit of a, a thing, but this area, I know that I don't have service all the way back to the, like from the main road. So um, just keep that in mind that communication on that weekend, if you have AT&T, maybe other self carriers work better back there. AT&T mm. does not. Mm-mm. No, I wouldn't, no. I wouldn't count on anything. And I might be even smart to, you know, whoever kind of goes off, you know, obviously the buddy system is to either record or just let us know exactly where they're going. You know, that way, if there's an issue, then we exactly know where to point somebody. I like that. Yeah. We can put it just in yeah. the just register. You could just write yeah. it down. Yeah. I love that. I think that that's a good idea. Just, yeah. just for safety. So yeah. guide options. So obviously Kiki, um, Rose river farms, if you wanted to hire a guide, they do have guides as well. Um, and then there's other options here also. So these will all be clickable. So we'll be able to share all of this with, uh, with you all. So you, if that's something you want, but this water, can is very DIY capable. And again, with all of these women, just, you know, making some fishing buddies and going out, um, you know, is, is an option as well. And we have four spots still remaining on Friday. And this was kind of the great thing about us reserving the yurts is if, um, we got first dibs on the water and these will go fast. So, Um, I need to, I believe I need to tell him by April 1st. So we have a few more days. If anybody wants to get private water at Rose River, the water is weightable. It's perfect for beginners, children, experienced anglers. Um, It's easy to access and even with physical disabilities. And there's four different types of fish that you can um, fish for and four or five weight rods are recommended. Now I know Mary Pat, I saw it. I don't know the exact time. So I'm going to get all those details and I will, those that have purchased a rod, I will make sure that you have all of the information. So I will provide that with for you. So, and you can sign up for the rod, if that's something you want, again, not, not, uh, not needed, but, um, via the event, right. Like we mentioned before, the native brook trout are the main fish that we'll be seeing up in the park. Um, down in the Rose River, they have um, brook trout, rainbow, and brown all stocked at the yurts. Um, like I said, smallmouth in the Shenandoah River on the South Fork. Um, I, I might be there this weekend. Um, I love smallmouth fishing in the summer once the water gets too warm for the trout. So depending on the season, if the water does warm up early, I mean, 
you small mouth, small mouth bite is starting. The pre-spawn stuff is the bite starting now. Um, and then tiger trout. Um, I do believe that I saw that DWR might be stocking them this year. Mm -hmm. So um, I would love to catch one. Oh, I hope yeah. somebody does take pictures. That would be super cool. Um, I, but I've not ever seen one myself. Yeah. They're cool. So, yep. And like Heather mentioned uh, for equipment, the three to five weight is about right. Um, I typically bring a four weight when I go up uh, into the rows and I think mine's seven and a half feet, but that's just what I have. So, but yeah, eight and a half, anywhere from like seven and a half to nine would be good. Um, the weight forward floating line, um, sink tips. I don't usually use them on this water. I use them sometimes for my small mouth in the summer to get some of the streamers down a little bit lower, but not necessarily for trout. And then you'll probably want a nine foot four to six X liter. Um, and then the four to six X, uh, tippet. Um, I usually use a five, you'll find a lot of sticks and debris and stuff in the water. Snap. I've snagged my, my flies on all kinds of stuff down. I mean, if you, if you see one of my Oros, um, <laughs> <laughs> indicators up there, please return it. I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah, there's stuff. I mean, you'll probably lose flies on trees overhead. I, I mean, I'm notorious for getting snagged on trees more than anything else, but um, the risk is worth the reward. And like Kiki mentioned, you should um, bring or have access to a first aid kit. If you're leaving your vehicle, you should probably take one with you just mm -hmm. for general purposes. And then you'll want to bring water and snacks, uh, change of clothes um, and your sunglasses for sure. Between sticks flying in your face and um, flies and sun, they're always good. Waiting staff too. Uh, yep. Yes, have staff. Have staff. Mm -hmm. And then clothing, you'll always want a rain jacket because you just never know. And then dressing in layers. I always wear um, a smart wool 150 base tank top. Um, I always do. And um, and I, I wear, I think, my smart wool undies too. Either it just, it's better when you're hot or cold. It's just good. And then layering, um, I usually will bring a whole bucket of clothes in the car and swap out as I need it. And I know I've been on the river taking or in the in back in the haulers, you know, you bring the extra layers because as the sun in the afternoon starts mm -hmm. to go down, it cools off. You definitely want to put it back on um, your boots and your waders. Um, you want to make sure you have studs. If you have studs, you don't want to use felt in this water. Um and then your waiting belt is important. If you're in deeper water, um, you just want to make sure that's nice and tight. We don't need any accidents of anybody going under. And then your polarized sunglasses, not only do they help you see the fish, they protect your eyes, like I mentioned. And if you know me, I don't go anywhere near the water without a hat on my head for skin cancer purposes, ticks, bugs, leaves, everything. Um, but the glare is also really the thing for me. So um, I always wear a hat. I think it's just a good, a good tool to add. Cool. Um, and Kiki, places mm. to fish. Wow. We got a lot yeah. of, there's a lot of access. There's a lot of access. <laughs> well, I think it's good that we're going to be going over the trout routes because, you know, I've guided on most of this, but at the same time, could I tell you, it, it, I know how to get there, but could I give you the directions? You need a trout route for that. Um, yes, Doug Deer's property, you know, is wonderful. This section up above his property and below his up above his property, you can't you can't fish until you get up near Graves Mountain. Below his property is almost directly across from the yurt, so you can actually walk out of the yurt across the street, and the and the rose is right there, and that is a heritage water, so it it, it is stocked. I will check to see when. The state's going to stock. Most of the time, you know, because there are a bunch of yahoos that park up and down the river and you see all the cars, so you know, the fish are there. But I will, you know, I will check that. Sometimes they do it in April, you know, um, the beginning of April, because it's Heritage Heritage Day, I think is April 1st or whatever, opening day. Yeah, um, I made that mistake last year. It's jam-packed. Yeah, yeah it is. they were giving something away. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So Rose River and the Shenandoah National Park, I think that's, Aaron, what you were talking about, is you just go past Graves Mountain, straight up into the park. You don't have to make any turns. There's a parking lot right there. And then you can start fishing almost right at the parking lot and walk as far up as you want. 
uh, up into the park. And that, and again, it's at elevation, which really in May is what you want to do is you want to find a lot of elevation, um, you know, for those brook trout and that nice cold water. So that's, that's a perfect place to go. Uh, as I said, Rose River below Rose River Farm is, is quite close to the yurts. Walk across. It's very weightable. You know, it's a freestone stream. It's maybe 30 feet wide, maybe 40 feet wide. Um, but all that area is, once they stock it, is there are a lot of people that fish it. But there's a lot of the water, so no worries. Now, the Conway, the Conway River is a little bit farther um, away from where we're staying. And there is very limited parking to get to the Conway River. It's really cool river. I don't know if you've ever fished it. That's one of the only rivers in the park that actually literally has brown and brooks living together. And, and they always have been there, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it, it, it's a beautiful piece of water. It's a little bit more remote. It's got some private property prior to getting up into the park. You know, so th that's a little iffy, but it, it's doable. It's doable. Um, Hazel River, to be honest with you, it's a smaller body of water. There's not. Now, this is the thing about, and Erin, you know this, and I don't know, Angelica, maybe you do too. You know, some of these rivers, when you get up far up into the park, there, there are people up there that don't want you near their property. And so you have to be really careful. Um, and it's the parking issue more than anything else. Because you cannot park on someone else's property unless you get permission. You know, the one thing is, if you want to fish something, always try to get permission. Otherwise, don't even dare park in some of those places up there because you never know what's going to happen. So the, the hazel is a little bit more. I haven't fished there in, a, in a quite a long time, to be honest with you. I don't know, Aaron, if you have. Mm -hmm. um, a lot. Yeah, it's a smaller body of water, not a lot of parking. Hughes River is right at the base of Old Rag. It's stocked. Um, it, it's very easy to get to, very easy to navigate. Rapidan River, this is, and again, Aaron, you had mentioned, the Rapidan, if you're going to come down to this hang, you need to fish the Rapidan yeah. River, okay? Yeah. Because it, it's famous and people come from all over to fish it. Why? Because it holds, you know, the most beautiful brook trout in the state of Virginia anyway. But there are three different points. There's the upper Rapidan, which generally you want to access from the top of the park and go in that way. That's where the Rapidan camp is. Or the middle Rapidan is the road to go to the middle Rap is just across from Doug's property. But that is a horrible, horrible road, Aaron, if you know that. If you've been yeah. There. But incredible fishing beautiful but it is it is tough to get to unless you have a, a, a you know high clearance in a truck and you know every year that that road gets even worse and worse so yeah. so the lower access point graves mill is where it is so much easier to get to and there's there's a lot of parking and you can start fishing right at the parking lot and you can walk from that parking lot all the way up to the middle rapid and it's like four miles, but you can do it if you wanted to. And the elevation increases. So that's where I'm going to probably, um, you know, take you guys to, if you've never been there, because it's much easier and it's all pocket water fishing. You know, it's, it's, it's classic pocket water. Robinson river is right below the Rose river, you know, by Doug's property, the, the Rose and the Robinson kind of come, you know, uh, kind of converge on one another. And that's a heritage property or heritage water. So it's fishable. It's got signs, you know, it's very well marked. The Stanton is a feeder stream to the lower Graves Mill access. It's a smaller stream, full of brook trout, easy to get to. It's probably a mile from the parking lot. Upper Rose, you were talking about the Upper Rose. You, you drive all the way up from um, Graves Mill and you park right there and you can walk, you know, walk up as far as you want. Um, into the park. White Oak Canyon and Cedar Run is up past Graves Mill. It, it's a little bit of a drive in and you, there's a parking lot. And of course, then you just have to walk a path and you walk, the path goes all along the, the water. It's a little bit smaller water, it's still pocket water, but it's a little bit smaller stream. So it's a very popular hiking trail. So. It's a bit, yes. So you're good. You're going to be competing for parking with people who are literally just hiking and walking their dogs. So, so there's plenty of, if, if you're going to come to this hang and you've never fished for brook trout, you need to fish for the, for the brook trout. So there's, there's plenty of that water. Exactly. Wait, can yeah. I interject Kiki? The yeah. one super cool thing on the Rapidan is the camp that Kiki was referencing. Yes. It was, 
um, Roosevelt's camp, right? Was it Roosevelt Hoover. or Hoover? Hoover. Um, well, Hoover. Yeah. It was, so yep. there, it's a really cool um, yep. old presidential fishing yep. camp. And they used to correct, jump in Kiki, wherever I'm yep. wrong, but I my the story I've heard was that they used to stock it for him so that he yep. could come out of the city away yep. from the white house and come out to this place to fish yep. wild fish that they yep. put there for him. Yeah, so exactly. it's, it is really cool. It's it yeah it's really neat if you can if you can go visit and again you would have to talk to Shenandoah you get on the website to find out if it's actually open to to visit and how to get to it because you know driving up that road to the camp is really really difficult it'll shake your anyway. brains up <laughs> it'll shake your brains up yeah it will it will definitely so yeah I mean it's just it, again long story short plenty of water to fish it's free and stones this, brook trout. yeah this is a um, this is actually a link on the Rose River website and it's on our, it's on our PDF that's listed on our, our the Fish and Hang Virginia uh, website. Yeah. And it actually is a map. So you can click yes. on it and it'll go to it. So Rose yeah. River Farms has provided that. So again, that yeah. we will make sure that we provide you that link as well. So just another sure. way. And as far as private versus uh, public trout routes will be definitely a great yes. option. Yes. And, you know, I'm um, thinking about parking, just looking for public parking is probably best. Be mindful. Just as Kiki said, it's important to very, uh, yeah, Oh, very. like deliverance. Very, yeah. very yeah. important. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> okay. absolutely. And the thing is also just, just grabbing a, a ride from a friend and taking, right. you know, one car versus three, you know, that's the best way yeah. to do it. Absolutely. And here's just some photos yeah. of, you know, some of the rivers, some of the brook trout, um, looks like uh, maybe a little elk hair caddis, some dry fly mm -hmm. action, which is awesome. And, you know, just some other, just what the river will look like and some of the yeah. fish. So, um, yeah, just some to get you excited. Mm -hmm. Um, and we already talked about public versus private mm -hmm. and let's talk about some hatches. Kiki, you want to already talked go. about the sulfur. Yeah, exactly. And, and I did mention that, you know, we're pretty classic as far as the spring, you know, the April grays, we call them. And that's just a, a word for the, the four beginning hatches that we have are all large, like size 12 and size 14s. And generally they're darker. They have darker bodies and they're bigger. So if you don't have a Quill Gordon, if you don't have a March Brown, if you don't have, you know, um, a Hendrickson, a Parachute Adams, you know, this is wonderful about our hatches on the East Coast is an Adams or a Parachute Adams will actually work for almost all the spring dry flies, which is nice. So always have Adams anyway, because they imitate a lot. Um, but if you want to get specific, our first hatch is Quill Gordon. Uh, the second one generally is a Hendrickson and there's dark and light Hendrickson's male and females. Um, but then, then March Browns, but they're all big, you know, and, and then we move into, um, and what's nice about them being bigger is the Shenandoah, the Rapidan river, a lot of our, 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 our freestone and our brook trout streams are, our pocket water, lots of white water, lots of big rocks. So you want something that's big and fluffy because it's hard to see once you, once you make a cast into some of that water, you want something that floats high and that you can actually see. Um, the other thing that I normally tell people is always have uh, a, a stimulator pattern with you, a larger stimmy pattern, like a stonefly imitation, because those are big and bushy and, and the brook trout just love them. And there are quite a big, a good, a good amount of stoneflies in the park as well, the real big ones. So um, keep that in mind. Once you get into the light Cahills and the sulfurs, you know, as spring, as we get into spring, the, the flies get smaller and they get lighter in color. And that's when you kind of move into the gray fox, the light Cahills and the sulfurs. Um, so, you know, I carry all three of those, but you could probably carry just a, just a sulfur in all those different sizes. I think you'd be okay. Um, other than that, maybe a stimulator with, an, with a yellow body or a humpy with a yellow body. Because, you know, the fish are looking up and they're looking for the yellow. So you don't necessarily have to have a specific sulfur, but something with a yellow, yellow body. So, you know, a, a stimulator or a humpy would work as well. Oh, there you go. Cool, Gordon. Mr. Rapidan. Uh, Mr. Rapidan is an all catch fly, um, you know, that we use in this area that the brook trout love it. The royal wolf, you know, imitates everything, but there's nothing in nature that looks like that. But it's got a little red on it. Brook trout love red. 
uh, parachute atoms, your, your blue winged olives. Um, generally, you'll see those a lot. They're a little bit smaller um, than your sulfurs. As I said, usually the three sizes, the 18s, the 16s, and the 14s. Your stoneflies, I would carry just a plethora of um, stimulators in, in size, you know, size probably 16, 14s, something like that. And you have orange body, green body, and yellow body. And then nymphs, to be honest with you, I love just a basic uh, a hare's ear or pheasant tail nymph. I love different colored collars. You know, I call them Frenchies, but basically an orange collar, a pink collar, a red collar. These little brook trout, these fish just love a little bit of splash of color. So um, that's, you know, prince nymph, hare's ear, uh, uh, you know, th those work really well. Midges. Zebra midges are great. You know, we have lots of uh, lots of midges on these waters. Um, and then if you're looking at any sort of caddis, I always have like a green rock worm, which is a bright green with a black black head on it. That's all you need. They love green as well. Um, and at my, my usual setup is a, is, a, is a stimulator and I drop off of, you know, a collared pheasant tail off of that usually to fish for mo a lot of these rivers. Terrestrials, I, you know, fish love ants. So have ants usually black, you know, the bigger, the better, munchy, you know, they love the ants. Um, you won't, you won't see, you know, the, the, uh, the hoppers or the, um, you know, anything else, but definitely ants um, in, in the, in the springtime. Cool. Good job. So, okay. Fishing techniques. So on these waters, if you're, if you're looking at, at the free stoners, like the Robinson, the Rose, Doug's property, you can go with a, just a straight dry fly. You can do, as I just mentioned, a dry dropper. A great one to do is a stimulator and just drop off any sort of favorite nymph. You know, sometimes you have to hunt and peck. Sometimes you have to tie a few on just to see what they're looking for, um, what color they're looking for. Um, sizes are generally 18s and 16s for the most part. I prefer a bead on mine because I just don't ever want to, you know, if, if I'm not fishing a dry dropper, I don't want to have to add any split shot on or anything. So adding a bead is always the way to go. It's a little bit easier. And also they like that flash. And if y'all probably know this, but you know, that little bead sometimes can imitate that little air bubble that's on the back of the nymph when those nymphs are actually hatching out um, to the surface. Your own nymph fishing, I do a lot of that. I have for years. Um, you know, again, looking at all the rigging, you know, I think it's a lot of its personal preference is how you're going to set up your 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 neuro your own your own nymph rig. Um, you know, my classic is just using a heavy, heavy anchor fly or a terminal fly and then just drop off something off that that's smaller and lighter. But people sometimes reverse it. But again, that's personal preference. I said, you know, in my in my uh, responses to the questions, you know, a lot of it just depends on depth of water. Fingers crossed we'll have good water levels and just the, the speed of the water, the current of the water. So, you know, you, you got to see the water first and then just kind of make a decision on how you're going to set yourself up. Streamers, you know, fish love big, big meals. I love just streamer fish. You can fish single streamer, double streamer. You can do a streamer with a stinger on it, you know, um, black and olive. Um, we have something called a golden retriever on the East Coast that people absolutely love. Also a thin mint and a frankenfly work really well. They're all streamers. They all are tied to imitate bait fish because there are a lot of crayfish in these streams and there's a lot of bait fish in these streams. So, you know, all different, all different setups. It just depends on how, how comfortable you are fishing them, to be honest with you. And in the, we have, we're just going to, we're yeah. not going to, we have a bunch of examples oh, of yeah. different setups that we'll just, once we send out the PDF, you can have, yeah. and what I would suggest is either taking a picture of them, have them on your phone. So yeah. that way you have all these different examples of, of yeah. what you want to do, but you know, just, yeah, here's a nymph leader with just a single heavy fly mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and different. And again, all of these different links and everything are all subject to what, <laughs> what yeah. the depth of the water is and where yeah. you're fishing. So right. um and then a yep. double nymph rig. So here, there, some people will tie them off of the hook bend, mm -hmm. or you can do a tag end. So there's multiple ways to do like a double nymph rig. And again, mm -hmm. we will um, we'll provide these for you. So that way you can just have these as examples. Yeah. Um, here's kind of a fun way to see it. You have single, you have, you know, just different ways. 
underneath the water is what it'll look like. Yeah. Um, and here's, and even just a little, some people will do like a balanced leech or something under an indicator that may not necessarily be for these type of waters, but in the oh. future, it might be something. Um, and again, just different, different insects, usually your heavier bug, just as, as Kiki said, was that anchor fly. So it's heavy. It's usually on the bottom. And then your tag end tends to be your lighter fly. Right. Right. And we, do you all swing soft tackles or yeah. any, I mean, yeah, I mean, this we is do. my personal favorite way to fish. So yeah, swinging a soft tackle, but literally the easiest way to set up, you just tie on a little tiny subsurface wet fly and just cast it down and let it swing through. Right. So mm -hmm. the yeah. easiest way, this and a dry fly. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And here's your single dry. So you use your sulfurs and, <clears throat> and we'll make sure that lists, we'll make sure that all of the lists, the equipment checklist is all has additional flies. I just wrote down all the sulfurs and the sizes. So we'll make sure all yeah. of that is updated for you all. So you have the best information. Um, and then here's your, your dry dropper, right? So your double yep. dries here, here's your dropper fly. And again, all just suggestions. Yeah. Um, a double, so you just as this is kind of your hopper dropper or your dry mm -hmm. dropper set up here where you have your point fly or your dry, and then you're going to have a, something under, under the surface as well. So, <clears throat> um, some streamer stuff. So you can have just a single streamer where you're just casting it down, stripping it back. You can slow swing, strip, dead drift, dead jig, mm -hmm. you know, all the, all the things. Yeah. We, we call it the angle of the dangle. You know, you got to figure Ooh. out how they're going to take that. Yep. I like it. The angle yep. of the dangle. The dangle. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's like um, when in doubt, warrior out. Sometimes you... people will use a red or a, a rainbow yep. warrior or yep. wood is good. Foam is home. There's yep. all yep. these things. You ain't you know. snagging, you ain't bragging. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, so the, lots of different options for you all. And again, we'll have this in the PDF that we're going to share and print them out or take pictures and have them on your phone. So that way you have them when you're out um, and, and you're like, oh, well, how do I set up this specific uh, setup? So, yeah. Um, and then just a few conservation conversations or considerations. Um, again, we mentioned that we are looking for a location that can house and the resource can hold a lot of people, which this area can. Um, but really keep fish wet. So United Will the Fly, we are um, media partners and we are advocates for keep fish wet. So we feel that it's very important for us to just give you some tips. So a couple of tips here is wet bare hands are best. So take off your gloves if you're wearing sun gloves, winter gloves, um, and all of those gloves, if they adhere to those fish, they'll take off that protective slime layer and can cause harm to the fish, can cause bacteria, lots of harm. So wet bare hands are best. And they look, I mean, that's a really cool photo. You know, these are great, great ways to showcase, showcase the fish. Um, also 10 seconds or less. So minimizing your air exposure. So science has shown that for um, kind of average for all fish species, especially for trout that 10 seconds or less. So meaning 10 seconds out of the water or less, and that is accumulative. So if you take it up, you put it down, you take it up, you put it down, whatever, those 10 seconds are accumulative and will add up. So just keeping that in mind as well. Um, hold the fish over the net. So this is a, I love this photo. You can't even see our faces, but to me, it's just because the story is the fish. Also having your fish under the net is good or over the net, because if you, it, you know, fish are slippery, so it might then flop back into the net. <laughs> so mm -hmm. just a good little tip um, and making sure you're holding over the water. Lean over the boats. We aren't going to be doing any boat fishing, but it's best to, to have those fish out over the water versus inside the water and not falling into the boats um, and lean down. So as a, if you are partnering or buddying up and you want to showcase and take pictures of these new friends you've just made, just making sure the, the best picture is going to be where you have your anglers. Um, kneel down and then where the photographer then also kneels down. It just looks so much better. You're holding the fish over the water. It's just a, a more beautiful and aesthetic photo. Um, fish tails are awesome. Eyeballs, scales, all kinds of things. So, you know, like just focusing on, on the fish. That's why we're here. 
Um, and thinking outside the box, I know many people are afraid of bananas, but I say fear no fruit. <laughs> and so, um, you know, just having fun too, like these candids and these are people that you're taking, you know, these are new friends or old friends. So have fun. I'm a complete sucker for uh, bent rod photos. So this is, I just took this photo this last weekend. Okay, um, so, familiar. Yeah. yeah. When you're uh, it's Heidi Lewis, Heidi, Heidi I was going to say, yeah. yeah, Heidi, Um, you know, and taking <laughs> pictures of loops and rods and just, you know, just casting photos. Again, there's so much you can take than just that classic grip and grin. And please make sure you tag us as well as uh, share all of your photos in the, in the Facebook group. Cause it'll be, it's fun and exciting to, to celebrate. This is going to be an amazing weekend of just celebration and of community. So um, regulations, we talked, we talked about this, but you know, at the end of the day, Regulations are there to protect the fisheries. Please know and obey them. So it's your responsibility to know all of the regulations. Um, we're, we're doing our best to provide those links for you to start to do that work. But at the end of the day, it's it's on you. So um, please, you know, share that. And, and I know Mary Pat just had wrote that White Oak has been requiring parking permits. Mm, uh, okay. So, hikers. so, you know, yep. if you have these little tidbits of information or if you see anything, just post them in the Facebook group because I think it's nice for all of us to, to see that and, you know, and learn that, or if you see a regulation or something that you feel is important, please feel free to just share it in the group. Um, and finally, you know, COVID policy, I know COVID still exists. I am a, I am a critical care nurse and it's still there. Um, so again, we're, we're following the CDC and state of Virginia recommendations, but, you know, if you have symptoms or if you do pet test positive for COVID, uh, then please don't come. That's just, you know, be mindful of just the community and being safe, uh, safe for mm -hmm. everybody. And in conclusion, and before we open it back up is we just want you to have an unforgettable weekend. And really this whole weekend is our missions just to foster a sense of belonging to everybody. Um, we want to provide that education and this is a part of it and truly drama of any kind will, will not be tolerated. So we're here to have fun, to be supportive, to empower women, to educate and just you know, connect and, and hang at the end of the day, it's all about the hang. So, um, you know, if, if there's any issues, please feel free to reach out to me, something I don't like to take care of, but I will. Um, cause again, we want this to be a very inclusive and amazing, amazing weekend. So, Feel free to contact us. You can send me an email at unitedwomenonfly.com or post in the Facebook group. If you need an immediate uh, answer, please just email me and I can provide an immediate answer to you. But utilize the Facebook group for sure, because if you have a question, I'm sure someone else has a question. And it's nice because all of us co-hosts are kind of we're looking at it and we can help answer that. What questions do we have or excitement or how y'all feeling? Well, yeah. I'm going to step in, Heather, for a second. Yeah. I just want to let you all know, especially several of y'all who uh, are coming along because I invited you to come along. I promise as newbies. Hi, Emma. Hi, Shelby. Hi, Renata. I promise that you all, we will go over all of this. This yes. was a oh, lot yes. to absorb, yeah. like yeah. so much yeah. that even I'm like, wait, where do I drive? How am I going to get there? How am I going to get there without rolling my heel? Um, so we will, we will go over all of this again, I promise. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Those of y'all who are in uh, the Virgi Northern Virginia or Ohio or Michigan, um, West Virginia, reach out to me. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And utilize the Facebook group.